DirecTV. Let's have a little chat about DirecTV, shall we? The premise of it all is a desire to leave Spectrum Cable and Cable Internet for a more viable service with something that's more technologically advanced that is possibly uh, cheaper to try to cut some bills down. The quality of Spectrum service is pretty shitty. Uh, tons of issues. Watching TV, things lock up, and then they stutter, and then they go, and then it keeps happening and happening. And I'll be watching, the box will shut off, and then do an update, and you're sitting there for like 20 minutes. And overall, it hasn't been a great experience. Uh, they're a bit on the expensive side, so... A week and a half or two weeks ago, whenever that was, a guy came up on a Segway, a little mini Segway, and knocked on the door. Cool dude. He had an AT&T shirt on. He said, yeah, we're just going around. Uh, you know, we just installed the whole infrastructure for fiber optic in your area. And uh, I, if you have a few minutes to talk. And I was already thinking about doing this, waiting for fiber to come out. So I said, absolutely. So I brought him inside, and we he, he showed us all the the plans and here's what things cost and here are the speeds and you know and he made a great sales pitch he seemed like an honest genuine dude you know we shot the shit good guy so we sign up awesome we could get some faster speeds uh i've always liked the at&t like back when we had uverse in south florida i like the interface it was more streamlined and futuristic uh, Spectrum is a bit of an old, outdated kind of 1990s to early 2000s kind of cable logic. Uh, anyway, so we sign up. We're like, great. And they schedule us for the same day, and that was uh, Monday this week. But then I had to reschedule because I wasn't sure if my – because I had to go get my truck, and I wanted to be here. And I wasn't sure what time my truck was going to be done. So then I thought to myself, well, if we do both the same day, where am I going to put the dogs? Right? You can't have the dogs jumping all over installers and shit. There's a liability there. So I changed the installation. For her side, I made it uh, yesterday. And for my side, today. Overlap. Put the dogs on one side. Do what you got to do. Then do the other side. Bob's your uncle. Everything's fine. So that's where that was. Now, yesterday... Two guys showed up. The first guy that showed up promptly at the appointment time, I will say this, um, was a big fat Russian guy wearing a jean jacket in 100 degree heat and jeans. Very strong Russian accent. I didn't, couldn't quite tell he was Russian. You knew he was Eastern European, but I couldn't quite make out the... Very hard to understand this guy. Nice guy. He seemed cool. Really likes coffee. My mother made him about six or seven espressos on an espresso machine, a couple cappuccinos, and I think two other cups of regular coffee. The guy drinks coffee like a, a meth head camel from Russia. So we're trying to make sense of what he's saying, and he's trying to give us the sales up speech about phone upgrades. He's like, we have excellent ideas in the phones, and then you get the uh, 150 gift card for you, 150 gift card for you, and then, oh, look at the deals, so many deals. We have, okay, you trade phone, we give you $800. Any phone, piece of shit, go pull it out box. I was like, I have a piece of shit phone in the box. It's an S4 Active that's like fucking six, seven, eight, nine years old. Oh, yes, that should be fine. You give me that, we give you $800. You keep your other phone. Good, good. More coffee, please. Okay, so <laughs> this goes on for a couple hours. And then the installer shows up. Really awesome guy from the islands in the Bahamas with the dreadlocks, smooth as a cucumber. Really knew his stuff. Really awesome guy. He starts climbing up in attics and running all the lines. He just really knows his stuff, right? So everything's going just smooth as it can. Like baby oil on silk, man. Just sliding by. It's like, cool. And then we're talking to the Russian. And he's talking about... And my mother stopped for a second. It's like, you have an accent. Where are you from? He's like, I originally from the Russia. My mother's like, oh, welcome to the United States. Like, I be, I've been here 27 years. <laughs> I was like, can't tell from the way. I can't understand a word he's saying. I was like, I'm sorry, can you say it again? I'm sorry, can you say it? Because he just really... In the cell phone, and then you do the thing, and then... Uh, fuck communism, you know? But everything got done. So then we, we, we started looking at the cell phone plans... We add up what we're paying now with T-Mobile, and the they have these, uh, you know, promotions. If you're getting the fiber and the DirecTV streaming stuff installed, 
you get a $20 off per line, per bill, forever. So instead of paying 85 bucks, you pay 65 bucks, right? And then he goes, uh, well, for the fiber optic and the, and the DirecTV streaming service, you're each going to get a $150 prepaid Visa card. And said, and if you do the phones, we give you each a $250 prepaid Visa card. And we give you 800 for the trade-in. So all that math really added up. It made sense. I've been wanting to upgrade my phone for a while, you know. And, uh, and hers was, all, you know, it's long in the tooth. The screen's starting to look a little, you know, faded. So I was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So then we do that. We order the phones. And, and, the, and I say, all right, so when the phones arrive, like I've done before, I just, I just do the data transfer, and then do I call the customer service and activate? Oh, no, 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 you must wait for me. Okay, so when you, well, uh, I'm on vacation for a week. It's like, okay, so I have to wait for the fat Russian in the jean jacket for a week to activate my new cell phone. Kind of sucks, but okay. So you, because I give promotion. I have special deals. Like it's, you wait for me. It, it, all will be good. More coffee, please. Okay. okay. <laughs> so everything gets installed. I posted that video. Awesome. The speeds are in sync. The interface looks pretty slick. Overall, it was a positive experience. Fast forward to today. Um, I'm scheduled 2 to 4 p.m. That's the time I had chosen. I should have chose 12 to 2. I'm making breakfast this morning around 9 at 9.15. My phone rings. I got bacon frying in the pan. I got eggs I'm trying to get into the bowl. And got beans in the pot. And, you know, doing my thing. I, lo I love a nice Irish breakfast. And the phone rings. It's like 9.30, 9.45-ish. And it's like, hi, I'm your DirecTV installer. It's like, hey, bud, how you doing? He's like, I just had two people I can't get a hold of that I'm scheduled to do. Do you mind if I come early? I was like, sure. At that point, I was kind of like, ah, oh, shit, I wanna, I'm making breakfast. But I didn't, you know, I was like, yeah, sure, dude. You want to come over now? That's fine. He goes, okay, I'll be right over. I hang up. I start to turn out, down the heat because I got to slow, I got to go, I got to pause breakfast. I get everything turned down, and, and I start to do a little cleanup. I say, right, I'll finish this later after we get this started. And then I, the phone rings again. Hi, it's me again. They just gave me a repair call. I can't come. I was like, okay. Turn the heat back on. Here's the bacon sizzling. The beans are steaming. Got eggs in a bowl and some sliced potatoes. About to throw in with some olive oil and some spices because they're delicious like that. Paprika and sazon goya caliente. Fantastic. Uh, oh, a little onion powder, too. And... Uh, a, a touch of magic, because that's how I roll. So he calls back, says I can't come. I was like, all right, so you'll be here. The, yeah, I'll be there at the schedule the, between 2 and 4 p.m. So time starts rolling by. I was going to run to Home Depot. I had some other errands I wanted to run, but like, nope, I have an installer coming. Let's get this shit done. I get an update text message a few hours later, and I'm outside. I got the garage open. I open the attic door. I get getting everything ready so this guy can get in, get it done, and get the fuck out. And I get a text saying, your installer has been delayed. Will you, do you want to reschedule? Or do you want to keep? He may be arriving between 4 and 5 p.m. I was like, no, keep. Let him come. Fuck it. So at 4.35, 4.40, I get a phone call. It's my installer. He's like, hi, I'm trying to find you on Empress Lane. Uh, but I, I, I see a one, but it's like Empress. No, my street I live on is called Empire, like Star Wars. Empire. Same address they came to yesterday. The same, it's the same fucking building. Just a, one has an A on it and one has a B on it. And a big three in the middle. That's it. And, uh, although I'm showing Empress on the service ticket, I was like, we might not be able to do anything because it has to call. Oh, fuck. Like, well, he's talking to me. He's like, can you just come to my house, please? I'm standing outside. I'm waiting for you. So he comes pulling up, pulls the orange cone out, walks over. Hey, how are you? And I, start, I showed him what the guy did yesterday. All right, so here's what you got to do. And I figured, all right, all he's going to do is make a phone call, update the address, knock this shit out. So he wastes my time. I walk up. I show him the work the other guy did on the side of the building. I brought him in the house. Here's a plate up here that the Spectrum guy cut improperly, and then he had to do one down below. So you have two options to run it. He goes, well, yeah, you know what I could do? I could, I could just pull that coax all the way out and, and run it through there. I was like, great. He goes, but I can't. Because there's a wrong address on the service ticket. So there's nothing I can do. Walks out, gets in his fucking truck, and fucks off. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck. So I jumped in the truck to go run a quick errand. Uh, I was out of smokes. I had to get some smokes. And she needed some too. So as I'm driving over, I call one of the 1-800-DIRECTV numbers. 
and I get the first foreigner who speaks very broken English, hardly able to hear them because the volume's so low. Obviously, an IP-based soft phone somewhere in a third world country. It's just, there's no way to not know that that's what's happening. I've been in the for telephone support gig all my life at various levels and various products, mostly all computer related, but still, I started at, the, I've done some shitty jobs, I worked up, I had some good jobs. So I, I kind of know the, how that works. I thank you for calling at and and uh, how may I help you? And I go through the spiel. Here's what happened. And I'm not really angry yet. I'm like just a little pissed off about it. I'm like, all right. So here's my name, and here's my account information, and here's the, hey, can I have a passcode? And bup, 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 bup. Okay, that's not, not a good passcode. Can I ask a security question? Let me go through this spiel. I'm in the truck waiting to go in the store. When I get through 10 minutes through this, all right, verify. Okay, now I'm calling about my direct AT&T DirecTV fiber optic and uh, my DirecTV streaming. Oh, no, this is the cell phone department. I cannot help you. I said, okay, can you transfer me to whoever controls the customer service for direct TV streaming and fiber optic internet? Oh, yes, please hold. Five minutes on hold. Horrible music. And they go on in these spiels. They're reading these scripts. Before I, get, before I transfer, I just like to say thank you so much, Mr. John. And da, 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 da. Okay, th thanks. On hold another five minutes. I get another guy. This is a guy this time. Very low voice. It's a weird foreign accent. Don't know where he is. Could be in Ethiopia, Timbuktu. I don't fucking know. He definitely ain't in Jersey. And they, this guy, I can barely hear him even more. I can't hear you. Can you turn that up a bit or get, get push the microphone closer in between the, the whatever? And I go through the whole spiel again in the information. Pull up the account. I'm like, this is what happened. I need to speak to a supervisor. I need to get somebody scheduled. First thing tomorrow morning, this is unacceptable. Okay, oh, no, no, we don't handle that here. We have to transfer you to another department. So this happens six more times. Eventually, I guess I, I hang up on the third guy because I need to get out of my truck and go grab the smokes. I grab the smokes, walk back to the truck. I call again. I'm driving home. I get home. I got another guy. I go through the spiel. I throw the truck in park. I grab my phone, turn off the truck, go inside, look in the bag. They gave me the wrong cigarettes. They gave me her cigarettes in the curtain. And I got this guy on the phone. Can you please give me the answer to your security question? And like, fuck. And then I, so I jump back in the truck and I'm driving over and I'm talking to this other guy and we get through the spiel. And as I'm turning in and going to park, they say, okay, so now I've given you everything. How do we get somebody over t here tomorrow to do what should have been done today? Uh, let me place you on hold. Come back after five minutes. No, this is the wrong department. I can't help you with that, but I can transfer you. I hang up on him. I call back again. And this happens about four more times. So I'm finally sitting here, really pissed off. It's 100 degrees out. It's hot. Well, not 100, but, you know, I'm fat, so it might as well be. I call for the ninth time. And I get somebody. And at this point, I've fucking lost my patience. And I'm fucking getting heated. And uh, eventually, I get over to one girl, who's, or I think it was a girl, I don't know where she was. All extreme weird foreign accents. And that's fine. Hey, it's, they, they could be here. They could be down the street. I doubt it. There's somewhere where they can pay people $1.50 an hour. That's where they are. So eventually, they get, I get to the right department after like nine or ten fucking phone calls. This is like th two, three hours into this, sh this, this shit, right? And I explained the situation for the umpteenth time. But he seems to understand. And he, I, I verified it is the right department. And I said, uh, how was my address wrong on the service ticket for this, for, for side A, but not for B? Well, anything could have happened. It could have been entered incorrectly. And it could have this. I said, you got the billing information correct because you want your fucking money, though, right? You didn't get that one wrong. You got the service address wrong. Because somebody tired of EM and they probably just didn't pay attention. And again, shit happens. Not the biggest deal in the world. And I was like, all right, so basically, let's update the address so it's correct. He puts me on hold. Fifteen minutes later, comes back. Unfortunately, as much as I'd like to, I cannot get anyone out there until next Monday. I was like, what? Well, don't you have a manager who can just override that and expedite somebody? The guy overrode my call today and showed up at almost 5 o'clock because he said he had a repair call that came out of the blue. You can't put somebody else on hold that's after me? 
fuck them, make them wait a day or two. Puts me on hold again. Go speak to a supervisor. He went outside. He planted his camel. He, he smoked some hash. I don't fucking know. He comes back in. He's being very nice. And I'm like, calming down. I'm like, I'm very sorry if I sound upset. I'm just real frustrated with having to deal. It's like, this is why I left AT&T years ago. One of the biggest problems we used to have was the customer service was just so, it's just filled with imbeciles. Do your job effectively. I know they don't pay you a lot of money, but even when I was making 7, 10, 12 bucks an hour doing support jobs, I always did my best. I always listened to the issue and I paid attention. A lot of these people, they're fucking, they're idiots. So I was like, there must be a supervisor who can override that and, and get somebody here tomorrow. I'm, I'm not waiting a, a week or almost a week. So I'm on the he puts me on hold to go talk. So I have the number of the guy who did the original sales pitch. I call his cell phone. I left him a message. He calls back while I'm on hold with this guy. So I merge the calls. And he, hey buddy, here's what's happening. Yeah, I'm in Arizona right now, but I'm sorry, but uh, just let me know what happens. Click. <laughs> so he's not gonna do anything. I'll tell you, good salesmen are good con men. To make you think that they got power that they, that they don't. Whatever. So eventually, this guy comes back on the call. And long story short, I have to wait till Monday, first available. And uh, I said, all right, is the address correct? Is it Empire now? Like Star Wars? Oh, like Star Wars. Yes, I, I know Star Wars. Yes, that's great. fan fucking fantastic. You know Star Wars. Okay, we're all good. And then he goes, well, for your inconvenience, we're going to give you a one-month bill credit. All right, oh, cool. And we're going to waive the install fee. Okay, well, they waived it on the one to the side, but that's cool. So, uh, Monday, I guess they're going to possibly show up at the right address and uh, complete it. I said, is there any way I can get the installer from yesterday? Because he did a great job. Awesome dude. I gave him 15 bucks as a tip. Like, Thanks for everything, brother. You really did a good job. Everything works. Thank you. <laughs> And he said, no, we can't guarantee that, but we can give you the bill credit and we can waive the install fee, which they waived anyway. So, all right. So today the phones arrive in the middle of all this. I'm waiting. There's a knock on the door. UPS is a, is a box. I was like, what the fuck is that? I didn't order any gun parts. Open it up. It's the new S22 Ultra and her new iPhone 13. But I can't do fuck all with them. I can't activate them because the Russian with the jean jacket who loves coffee and caffeine is on vacation. So we gotta wait for that. Which again, not a big deal. Uh, but it's just, you know. I knew yesterday was going a bit too smooth. I'm just dealing with the Russian guy, which he was a barrel laughs. I kinda like the guy. What's frustrating is when you're doing business of any kind and somebody speaks with a very broken accent and mumbles and you're sitting there kinda leaning in and going, and the and the what? <laughs> and you're not trying to be mean or rude. It's a language barrier thing. But I need to understand. I don't want to agree to something that ends up costing me a shitload of money. Because he thought I said yes to this when I didn't understand what he said. And I just said, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's great. Whatever. So it's been a weird day. Now, is this a huge problem? No, it's not a life-altering problem at all. Is it frustrating? And does the heat compound that frustration? Yes. Is it going to get rectified? I'm sure it will. Eventually. While I'm on the phone with the guy, the sales guy, and the merged call, I get a call back from the AC company I called this morning because we need maintenance done on both of the ACs before the summer really hits. Uh, so I'm like, all right, guys, i got to place you on hold. And so I put, I put them on hold, and I pick up the AC person. And the, it was a lady. She's so like, all right, it's 139 for each unit. We come back for two visits. And then whatever we find and replace, we have to bill you. I was like, okay, hold on, i got to place you on hold. I go back to the sales guy and the support guy. Hi, guys, sir, I'll be right back. I go back to Birch. And like, okay, yeah, that's good. Let's schedule it. All right, what's your, what's your, what's your first available date for the AC? Uh, that would be June 30th in a month. I was like, fuck, okay. Hope it doesn't die before then. You never know. Now, I, I, then I go back. I say goodbye to the Arizona sales guy who couldn't do sweet fuck all anyway. And then I got the uh, Marco, was his name? Marco Polo, he, who he likes Star Wars. That's nice. Uh, and then we finalize that. All right, so they're going to be here Monday. Uh, great. Thanks for the bill credit. Have a wonderful day. Appreciate all your effort. And uh, he tells me, God bless you. I was like, God bless you too, buddy. You have a wonderful day. And good night. So I thought I'd have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But the frustration that all of this creates was born out of somebody not verifying the information they were entering into a computer interface. Meaning, whoever's job it was was to make sure this information was entered into a database using, well, I'm sure, a very, a very fucking basic graphical user interface designed for support people. And I've worked on a plethora of that of various levels from Foxbro coded shit up to good quality SQL shit and everything in between with broken tables and indexes and you have to put clients on hold and they have to fucking everybody get out of the software so we can do a re-index on the Foxbro database and then everybody get back in and the client's been on hold for 27 minutes and sorry for waiting sorry thank you for your patience fuck you yep God bless America I've been there but oof, I'll tell you frustration you just shouldn't have as a new customer setting up for a new service because you want to make your life easier. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! America! Goddamn. On a side note, I have no problem with people of varying nationalities who speak different languages, who are from all different lands. That's great. More power to you. The potpourri of life. It's a beautiful thing. But, I'm sorry, I need to be able to understand you and you need to be able to articulate the nuances and details of what is basically a financial contract that I'm signing my name to. And we need to ensure that I understand what you're understanding and what you're going to bill me for. So I don't think I'm out of line. At one point after the fifth and sixth call, I just got pissed in the truck and I was like, can I speak to some an American who speaks English? And uh, she signed up, she had a really strong island accent. Yeah, man, I, I speak English very good now. And she got pissed off. I was like, well, absolutely, actually, you don't. But I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, whatever. I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I transfer you, white boy. I didn't say white boy, but then I get some other one that was more like a Hindu y India thing going on and very soft spoken. Okay, can you try for the easier? What? I'm turning the volume up on the fucking radio and. I got surrounded. I got 19 speakers in that fucking truck. I couldn't hear a word this fucking bitch was saying. And I was like, and she's speaking broken English at a low volume. The microphone sounded like it was across the hut. And we're doing this. <laughs> Loser. And I hung up. So Strange time to be alive in America. But we'll solve the problem and get it all done. That's it. Have a wonderful evening. Oh, my ADM tube is on the way. Awesome. I arrived Saturday. Still no word on the... Uh, on the duck lower, that'll get done when Sal gets around to it. I'm sure he's fucking overwhelmed and swamped by orders. Uh, and all that's left to wait on, really, is that uh, Sandman S, which who the hell knows when that's going to be. Maybe another few months. Hope for the best. Whatever. So overall, everything's going to be all right. Have a good evening. Your pal, Jake Merrick. Fuck it.